The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to reshape an arch wire without instruments, that is, with just using your fingers. This is possible on round stainless steel wires with relative ease. This round stainless steel is your normal finishing wire, or you would use 18 by 25 heat activated nitie wire, but that heat activated wire is not very easy to shape like stainless steel is. So let's first talk about what makes a arch wire shape. And to demonstrate that, an arch wire is made up of various radii, or radiuses is still plural and correct. And what I, oops, what I mean by that is, let's draw a center line, and then we'll take an instrument and make a radius. And that distance from the center of a sphere, or a circle, or an arc, is defined as the radius. And I'm sorry that doesn't show up really well for us right there, but you get the idea and you can see that curve right there. So let's look at how an arch wire might fit on top of that. And hopefully there's not too much glare on here, but can you see how, let's move this on the spotlight a little bit, how that fits that curve very accurately. So from here to here, this arch wire has a certain radius in millimeters which is approximately 22 millimeters. And then the radius changes right about here, and then it goes to something different, which is a much larger radius. So now that we know that, we will use that knowledge of the radii to help us shape an arch wire. But before we do that, let's talk about why you might want to change the shape of an arch wire. Let's say you have excess overjet, I'm sorry, you have insufficient overjet or lack of overjet, and you need to fix one more millimeter of class two, but the upper and lower incisors are banging into each other. And this is a very common finding. So if you were to taper the upper relative to what it started as, then that means that the upper front teeth would go forward. And if you wanted to add more overjet, you could retract the lower front teeth, use an expanded arch wire like any one and this NEO1 wire expands at the 4-5 area and it retracts the incisor and therefore that would net you some overjet. So this wire is expanded relative to the start wire and this tapered one is tapered relative to what the start wire was. So that's how we are determining this. And non-extraction ovoid one, by the way, is a very popular lower wire, lower wire for treatment plan number 32, number two, and number 90 for different reasons, but 32 and two to limit the lower incisor advancement. That's a very common finding. So what we're gonna start with today for the exercise, we're going to use a medium ovoid that's stainless steel, lower, and I'll take one out of the bag and we're gonna put it on top of the template to check this. And its shape is pretty close, pretty close to that. And there's a disclaimer on the bottom of the template that says these are not perfect, but it's pretty close for this endeavor. Now, I wanna change this into a non-extraction ovoid one. So what I know I have to do is I have to change those radii and look how it fits the curve on this one. So it's kinda of hard to see over the tripod there, how it fits this. The radius in the front for a medium ovoid is too small where the non-extraction ovoid one is a rather large radius. We just did that with the compass. So the first thing I have to do is start in the midline and increase that radius. So I'm just gonna use my thumb and forefinger, my thumb and forefinger right here, and I will put more pressure outward with my finger than my thumb. And then that's going to change that curvature, change that curvature. And I'm going to keep doing that back here. And let's see how I did in the front. Uh, yeah, so I'm not bad. I'm pretty good from about here to here now. And so now I have to make that get tighter toward the back and then tighter toward the back. So again, using my thumb and forefinger, I can make it get tighter toward the back. Can you see how it's got a little bit of potato chip in here? That's what I call it when the wire's not straight and that's kind of hard to see, but that's a super easy fix. You just take the twist out like that and then lay it back flat on the tabletop. And let's see how we did. And it looks pretty close. 
we need to tighten up uh, patient right side just a little bit more. And then that was too much. So we just have to take a little of that out. And I have to put some back. There you go. And you can see that it is quite close. Let me fix this little spot for us. And the purpose of the wire, don't forget, is it's called non-extraction ovoid 1, and the most common malocclusion is class 2. So what this does, where this sweeps back in, the tail end back here sweeps back in, that rotates the molar ever so slightly, just like your class 2 division 2 band, doctors, if you're POS, you know that that band has a tip back and a rotation in it, so that the elastic, when it's placed on that molar, will make it go toward normal, not away from normal. So there you are, reshaped from a medium ovoid into a non-extraction ovoid one with just your fingers. So the next exercise, we're going to look at a medium square upper, I'm sorry, medium square lower, and we're going to take one out of the package. And here's a medium square. And you see the medium square fits the template uh, fairly accurately. It looks pretty nice. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to make this into a small taper. So that's the one at the bottom of the screen. So let's go look and see what the difference is from here to here. And you can see what changes have to be made. And doctors, if you don't have this sheet, which you should have it because you can buy them from Progressive Dental Supply, make sure that you always trace the arch wire that you're starting with so that you'll know what the changes are. If you just start bending the wire, then you don't remember where you were, and then you don't know where you're going, and you can't tell if you made any changes. So now we just see that I just have to tighten up a radius or make a smaller radius right here in the front. So I can move that away. And then again, using just my fingers, I'm going to curve this in, and I'm pushing with my right index finger in there and I'm going to make this be a tighter radius, a tighter radius and you can see I'm getting closer to the right shape. Now I'll make it be tighter yet, tighter yet and then I'm pretty good right there in the front and I start, I need to change the taper right around here. So maybe 18 millimeters away from center line. Now I need to start making it go back outward, back outward. And I'm about 18 millimeters away. So that's why understanding that concept of the radius and where does it change is important in my opinion. And you can see I'm pretty close, but I need to have it a little bit wider. So you have to look and see where it starts being good and then where it starts being bad, so to speak. And I overdid it, so now we have to make it come back in a little bit. And come back in a little bit. So in the front I look pretty good, and in the back I'm pretty close, I can get it even a little bit better. There you go. And I didn't put a timer on there, but you know, that's that was pretty fast. And even if you had an inventory of wires, you could probably change the shape of a wire before you could get up out of the operatory and go to the place where the wires are stored and find the right wire and walk back and put your gloves back on and everything else. You could have just done it right there at the chair. So the next the next video production I want to do is I'm going to reshape a 19 by 25 wire, and that'll be with an instrument because 19 by is the wire that you're going to use for mechanics and shaping a wire or changing the shape of the wire is also frequently needed in mechanics as well as in finishing. So I hope that was helpful for changing the arch wire shapes and just remember it's practice, practice, practice. That skill takes a little time to develop and it does not come overnight. All right, doctors, thank you for watching.